As US moves closer to the election in November 2012, it has begun to withdraw forces from Afghanistan and has also started to lay the foundation for Afghan reconciliation. The path to uh, reconciliation is not going to be any easier than the military approach. In a series of articles, Polytech will examine the Afghan reconciliation process. Recently, two important meetings were held signifying the path towards political solution, the Istanbul Conference and the Loya Jirga in Kabul. The Bonn Conference is scheduled for early December. The U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan and reconciliation revolves around several key areas. These are the intra-Afghan political dynamics, the shape and size of U.S. presence in Afghanistan after withdrawal in 2014, the role of regional stakeholders in Afghanistan, the process of U.S. military withdrawal, the involvement of various Taliban factions in the political reconciliation and the role of Pakistan, and lastly, the tussles of emerging and established powers. For the purpose of this episode, we are going to focus on the negotiation tactics that different stakeholders are preferring. For example, should the negotiations be first held at the regional level and then move to the intra-Afghan level or the other way around. According to our recent analysis, it appears that US, US would prefer first holding regional discussion and then moving to negotiations within Afghanistan. On the other side, Pakistan seemed to prefer negotiations within Afghanistan first and then move to the regional level. There appears to be a resemblance between the tactics being adopted in negotiations now to those that were used at the time of Geneva Accords in the late 80s, dealing with the Soviet withdrawal from Afghanistan and what would follow. The Mujahideen did not directly take part in Geneva talks and that part was mostly handled by Pakistan and the US. The counterpart included President Najibullah of Afghanistan and the Soviets. With U.S. recently shifting its position from excluding Pakistan from the political approach to putting the onus on it to bring the various factions of Taliban to the table, appears to have a historical precedent. Meanwhile, Pakistan has provided no such guarantee that they have the will or a capacity to pull this off, as they did against the Soviets. Former Mujahideen that are now Taliban leaders, such as Gulbuddin Hikmat Yar of Hizb Islami and Sirajuddin Haqqani of Haqqani Network, would likely provide the institutional memory that would result in opposition to Pakistan taking on the representation role again. The progress in the reconciliation process is going to directly impact the pace of U.S. withdrawal. U.S. does not want to reduce its military leverage before a solution is in sight. However, continuing with the military tactics is likely to continue to complicate the reconciliation process. For example, Taliban continue to demand withdrawal of all foreign troops before peace talks can be held. On the other hand, mishaps have also continued. For example, in Mumbad Agency today, approximately 28 Pakistani troops were killed, uh, likely as a result of a miscommunication. Nonetheless, it probably would have an impact on the upcoming Bonn Conference. Polytech will continue to monitor the Afghan reconciliation process and we'll be updating you in the next episode.